are going to dive into something else right now. Something a lot of you guys have been waiting for is we want to start putting an LS motor together. We got all kinds of videos on how to do some painting tips and techniques. There's a ton of really good information that I'm not going to go through in this video. I'm going to send you a link. Down below will be the painting tips and techniques for these motors to clean these up. So there's a lot of people, can you buy a LS motor from a junkyard and they just go and slam it in there and throw a big turbo on it and run a nine second quarter mile and tell everybody on the internet that you can do this for 1200 bucks just like my buddy did. No, you can't. And we're gonna take you through some of this stuff how much it costs and how to go about the whole process of doing it. We already got other videos in on how to pick your motor and how to choose from a Gen 3, from a Gen 4. So check those videos out if you want more information on that. But we're going to go forward with putting one of these motors together and running it and everything. And we'll show you what kind of horsepower that it can uh, take care of what uh, the builds are, NA, what kind of oil pans we're going to run with this particular swap. So this one is going to go into a uh, X body, a 74 Nova is where this motor is going to go. What is the motor? It is a iron block, six liter, that actually came into, uh, uh, right on the back of the block here is where they're, they, they're stamped in on the back of the block. Oh, and they are on the front on this one as well. Some of them they are, some of them they aren't. On the front side of the motor also is the, uh, but the unfortunate part, if you're looking at one of these in a junkyard trying to figure out, oh, is it a six liter? Is it a five three? You can't see that when it's in the car because the transmission is hiding the casting in the back. The front drive accessories are hiding that in the front, so you can't physically see it. And that's where I want you to refer back if you're trying to figure out what one of these motors is. And that's a super easy way is to look at the cylinder casting number on it. And that, just like the other videos are showing, when you're looking for that, the motor in a junkyard, and it says 317s on it, more than likely, unless somebody swapped the cylinder heads at one time, and put them on a 5.3, that's going to be a 6 liter motor. So that's one of the uh, things, the context clues that you're looking for. Another one, like we talked about before, you look, this motor is upside down, so it's really easy to see. There is no tap knock sensors right here, and the knock sensors are in the top of the valley pan on it. So this is a Gen 3 motor, so that's what tells you the difference between that. Now the motor's apart. This is a 24X reluctor wheel right here. And you see it's a double width right here. Small teeth, big teeth on it. This is what your crank position sensor goes into and it reads that flywheel speed where the orientation of it is. And it sends that signal back to the ECU telling it, hey, I know where I'm at in relationship to the cam sensor. It compares the two and adjust your timing accordingly by the cam and the crank position sensors. So with the back of this motor apart right now, really easy to kind of see. These are your oil passages that go through and they oil your cam bearings and the, and the journals and the cover on the back of here has a little channel right here. So they're not connected side to side, but when you put the cover on here, it makes that passage so this is connected in between the two sides so it can flow through and cycle like that. That's on the, your back cover. Now you got your really big main seal, one piece main seal with your awesome gaskets that we were talking about in our other videos of these LS motors are so awesome for is their gaskets and why they went away from that in Gen 5 and got rid of these awesome gaskets, I don't know. but. Bring back the LS gaskets, they're awesome. So they seal up these things just super good. This is what they call a skirted block right here. The block goes up along sides. They are not no longer a two bolt main or a four bolt main. There are six bolt mains right here. So 
you got bolts coming in from the sides four bolts on each main cap like that your thrust is in the middle right here instead of like the old school small blocks your thrust bearing would be in the back of the motor the thrust is actually right in the center of the motor and uh, and they seem to have these things figured out pretty well because they really work so another thing painting these things uh, we kind of we got a lot more really good tips and techniques and everything in our other video with that but we just use an old timing chain cover and uh, and mask that all off and that goes on there so because some of the surface area there's just a gasket that goes on here and uh, we just don't paint that and same thing we put gaskets in the water pump seals but these motors you have to pretty much paint them on a engine stand because it's absolutely horrid with the nooks and crannies in here you have to physically turn the nozzle and every and you can do it all like this and think you got in all these nooks and crannies and the second you flip the motor upside down or right side up depending on how where you started you'll have all kinds of spots that you didn't get into and everything so it is really essential to either paint these things facing up or facing down or on an engine stand works the best where you can flip the thing around um, but before you put it on the engine stand actually it's awesome to paint the back side of it and uh, before you because once you put the engine stand up in there you can't really get at the back to paint it very good because of the engine stand arms on it so and you can uh, you can see one of our tests that we did actually on this motor is we painted this with a rust-oleum orange and waited until the next day and we hit clear coat on it went to clear it to give it a nice uh, gloss to fill, fill in some of the pits and it wrinkled the paint up in the backside right here so um, luckily that's where we t why where we tested it back here so you can't see it the transmission will be on here everything will be good but uh, note to self don't get on it the next day with clear coat if you're clear coating and want a little bit more of a gloss wait a couple days for that to uh, dry out completely and then get it on with your clear coat so this will be clear coated again as well make that gloss a little bit better but now we're going to start putting this thing together and uh and we're going to show you some of that uh oh with the, show you some of the things with this say like the pistons and rods uh, i got a couple questions earlier is like well what kind of horsepower do these things hold up to and uh, these are Gen 4, um, they're Gen 4 pistons. These are you, the ones that came out of here, actually. They are just cleaned up, and, uh, and we're going to reuse the pistons. So one of the things I want to go through with you where it really, really gets expensive fast on doing any one of these LS builds, it really gets expensive fast if your cylinders are worn out and it needs to be bored you add such a significant cost you can really add like two thousand dollars easily in difference in price, cost of your rebuild so the cylinder walls are big keys and the crankshaft wear and everything else how it comes apart you get your junkyard motor with three hundred thousand miles and it needs to be bored well, now you got to buy new pistons. You know, they're average of about 500 for non-forged pistons. You get into forge, they can be all the way up in the thousand. So, so now also you just added 500 to a thousand with just your pistons. Then the connecting rods have to be balanced with the piston, the connecting rod, and the crankshaft. So you buy new pistons with a bigger bore, they're obviously going to weigh more and uh, when they weigh more the crankshaft has to be counterbalanced and changed for that same balance so you add the price of the boring of each one of the cylinders you add the price of the piston you add the price of the uh, machining and balancing the crank and everything as well so keep that in mind when you're looking at a 300,000 mile motor 
Is it worth it? It might not be worth it because once you have to do all that, that could cost you a couple thousand dollars by itself. So $1,200 rebuild? I don't think so. It's not going to happen with one of these things unless you just get it from a junkyard. Best, best way that I can tell everybody to go get an LS motor is to get one out of a running, driving vehicle that you can hear it. You can see that it's not knocking, not ticking, has good oil pressure. If you can't verify that at all, you are just rolling the dice with what you got. So you have some really good luck like this one when we tore it apart. This one actually was in my 2000 GMC pickup when I bought it. And uh, luckily it was a really good running and driving. So I knew the motor uh, was, was good in the first place, but was even more surprised once we pulled everything apart. The piston bores are just awesome. They're just absolutely almost like brand new. The pistons are like new and stuff as well. A lot of people will say, oh, well, the coating is worn off. I'm calling complete BS on that coating stuff. It's just there for looks, basically, and uh, it's to make it look cool when you buy it in the first place. All of them are going to wear that off within about 10 minutes of running. So you see them like that, run them. That's, uh, they're awesome still. So clean them all up, make everything look new. New motor, clean, 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 clean is the key. We got a lot more cleaning to do with this thing. And then we're going to start putting this thing together. We'll give you another video coming up of the assembly of it and uh, some tips and techniques for assembling a motor as well. So stay tuned. We got a lot more coming up, guys. Don't forget to like this video. Click like, throw me a comment, let me know what you think. Ring the bell for those notifications when we get a new video. We got lots more coming up, guys. A lot of cool stuff coming up. I hope you guys are enjoying the ride.